And welcome back to the AC Spring Season Playoffs. Uh, Mad Lions are a match point, 2-1 up over Rogue, and had a phenomenal performance in game number three to bring us to this stage. And I think it is very fair to say that the winner of this series could be considered the second best team in Europe. You can make a very defendable argument when you see how Fnatic have fallen off. And of course, the winner of this series goes on to face G2. Yeah, in the upper bracket, those are the two teams without a loss yet yes. in playoffs, of course. So uh, very surprising, especially considering I think everyone pretty much unanimously had agreed G2 is probably the best team and Rogue is right there trying to contest them. And then Mad Lions is a bit of an afterthought. And then you have, oh, Fnatic in playoffs. Surely yes. they come back. Schalke maybe didn't think that much of them. But then, yes, Yesterday, that changed everything. And now this series is also changing the status quo with Mad Lions on match point. And the scary thing is whoever loses this series will be sitting waiting on Sunday next week in round two. And they will face either Fnatic or Schalke for a shot at the winner of this series and G2. Because, of course, if you are in that upper bracket, quote unquote, Kings match, the winner goes to finals, the loser goes to semis. Yeah, look, the, the winner of this match, guaranteed top three at least. Yes. So even if you're not second best, you're at least third best. That's still a big deal. And I think when you look at the teams, you expect that these are the top three teams. G2, Rogue, and Mad Lions have been the top three teams without, throughout the course of spring, have been in the standings, have been based on their play. I have to again credit Mad Lions. They adapted their play style from game one to two. Only one champion was different. Then in game three, the draft shaped up very differently, differently once again, but ultimately Alyoya has led the way to unlock Kazi and then the rest of the Mad Lions. Yeah, after being completely shut down in game one as well, right? You'd think that you come into the playoffs match rogue with, you know, how impressive a team they have been, that after they shut down you, a rookie and game one, oh, what do you do? You, you panic, you maybe make some mistakes, you struggle to find that impact, but game two is a completely different story. Game three, even improving on that as well for El Yoya. So this player has showed up and bounced back in such a big way for the place he has been in this roster as a brand new face in the LEC. For such a young player, for such an inexperienced player, and for a team that was widely regarded as choking on stage last year, um, not appearing right now. Now they're one win away from advancing to face G2. We're moments away from draft. G uh, Rogue have elected blue side once again. Are you bold enough to make some predictions on what you think could change this time around? Uh, look, I at the end of the day, I don't know what exactly is going to change for Rogue, but this team has been praised for its consistency over and over again. And when the going gets tough, down back against the wall, they must go back to that consistency. They must find that four. They must stabilize the early game. And it all starts with the draft. At the risk of oversimplification, can Rogue regain control and play the style that they have demonstrated consistently throughout spring, or will they elect to get scrappy with Mad Lions? That is what we will find out throughout the course of the draft. Tristana and Jinx once again removed from the pool. This is the same as Game 3 bands, and Nar once again immediately deleted from Mad Lions, followed up by the Senna. Now, I thought the Hecarim looked very good in the hands of Inspired, and it's interesting to see it banned away by Rogue themselves. Now, last game I said, do we leave open the Lucian or the Twisted Fate? Both of those options now on the table. Mad Lions, what do they want to do against that? Larson will very likely go for that first pick, Lucian. That's what I would do, back against the wall. You put your star player on that hyper kid, that lane dominant champion that can take over the map. And of course, that Lucian has been played three times throughout the course of this year for Larson. It is Hobbit. The Oriana was banned away by the Mad Lions themselves, and that is Instalock for Larson. I'm honestly shocked to see Mad Lions banning away the Oriana. Uh, themselves when that Lucian was open. Now, Humanoid has some options he can fall back onto if he wants. You've actually seen the Azir perform very well in the matchup up against Lucian in mid lane. Of course, Larson usually the one getting the better of that end. But 
with the Twisted Fate open, that has to be the expectation here for Humanoid. What I absolutely love about a game four where the Lucian and the Twisted Fate are now open and both locked in, now you actually get to see how they perform. Now you actually get to evaluate, were those bans worthwhile? Who had a better read and who can utilize the power picks better? And it was interesting because Max said in, in the post-draft interview last game, in the first couple games, both teams got what they wanted. And again, with these two champions, I feel like both teams got what they wanted. Rogue gets a, a mid lane that's super lane dominant can play for turret plates, can really get that shove going. And Mad Lions get Humanoid on the Twisted Fate, make the early game volatile, give them that global ultimate that shatters your timings and can gain you the numbers advantage almost instantly. I also love that Mad Lions say, now the Lilia priority, skyrocketing. Yes. Hecarim, of course, being banned, but also knowing that next to the Lucian, you want an AP jungler. Likely would have been that Lilia had Mad Lions not scooped that up on R2. Now, does Inspired want to lock in something like the Udia? Now we'll find out. The Thresh is secured for Trimby, so the Wife Steel bottom lane now secured for Rogue. They're gonna have to be split apart for a bit, you know? They'll have to resolve their differences in the mid game, you know, pair up once again. One still mid game, that's right, because Larson go. will be running that, and instead, <laughs> it'll be Han Summer returning to a champion that he's found great success on throughout the course of spring on that. Aphelios has played that and smashed last time he did play. And I wonder now, what do Mad Lions want to ban away? Do they consider trying to hit the top lane? Do they look at the jungle pool and look into that option? Maybe if the Urgot is secured, they move some of the matchups into that. That would be very surprising, especially because both uh, bot laners have been shown. Of course, Rogue did end up banning away that Urgot in the second phase last game. But now what Mad Lions have decided, they see, okay, we have the Twisted Fate, Rogue gave us that. We need side lanes that can act on an instant go in and play off of this Twisted Fate. So what better? than an Urgot in the top lane. You have the damage, you have the ultimate for the execute, of course. And then whatever they go for in the bot lane has to be a good answer into the Aphelios and the Thresh. Something that can, again, get explosive because there will be visits by Humanoid in that area. And no surprise to see Cannon Band away. Odoamne, one of the most prolific Cannon players here in Europe. He's played that extensively, 17 times throughout the course of his career. And with the... Uh, Expectation being you want to remove other options that he can run into it. What do you want to see from the jungle here as well as the top lane from Rogue? They've got themselves 280 carries. They've got themselves the scaling on their side, but they need some form of front line. Yeah, well, I mean, the Udir is open, and that's where, like, my initial thought is here for Inspired. Sort of fall back to that from earlier in the series for him. Keep up with the fast clear of that Lilia, of course. Maybe the, the best option for Rogue, but then if you're going top lane, you have to have, like, the heavy engaged top lane or something like the, the Scion, perhaps, for yeah. Odo once more. Mad Lions identify the Udir and ban that away. Very smart phase two bans from Matt. So with Lilia locked in, Hecarim and Udia in the ban pool, where does Inspired drop back to? That is the question we'll be finding out shortly. And with the Callista, the Jinx, the Tristana removed from Rogue, you anticipate another bot lane ban. Honestly, like, there are options. Like, you could go for the Nidalee if you're Inspired. Uh, again, one of those fast clear champions that can play very well off of mid lane priority, but it comes at a great risk. You're, you're losing a lot. You're sacrificing a whole lot when it comes to the team fight phase later on. You already know with an Aphelios, like, you're playing for the team fight. You have so much power in those 5v5s. The thing that we have seen from Rogue, even this series and throughout the course of Spring, though, their ability to invade, their ability to pressure the jungle is very good. As Kazi locks his hands Perfect. on Kaisa. Perfect. Kaisa, Allistar, Kaisa Rel, something like this. Give your bot lane all in potential. Of course, again, Twisted Fate moving with Elioi. Humanoid Elioi, that combination can be so effective at taking over the map. Rogue. I, I like it. I honestly like it. I think you put Inspired on the Nidalee and try to take over the, the jungle. How risky is this now? Is this a signal that says you have to get advantages early or the composition that Mad Lions have put together becomes too terrifying? Look, uh, I, honestly, Odo needs a front line. He needs something scrappy as well. Uh, we'll wait on his pick for the, for the time being. Inspired has been so good all year long, his entire career, this series as well. Invading, getting priority, yes. playing on the enemy buffs and what you can do now with Inspired if you take over the jungle matchup early you uh, alleviate some of the pressure that that Twisted Fate can have on the map by isolating El Yoya, by knowing where he is at all times and you have Larson on the Lucian they left it up they put Larson on that pick to enable Inspired in the jungle and the last lock in here will be the Alistair as you correctly predicted 
So much pressure, but when you think back to Inspired's career and his journey, I think his Olaf is what put him on the map. And it was getting in the face of every single jungle. This entire series, Ender has been talking extensively around Inspired's borderline addiction to invading and trying to steal away the Mad Lion's blue buff. I think it'll be crucial to their early game success. On the Mad Lion side, the ability to find picks with Alistair, TF, Lilia, Urgot is going to be so important. Yeah, it absolutely is. The difference is Elioia not on a hard ganking jungler yes. this time. It's the Lilia. It's his bread and butter, but not what we've seen so far this series. So the urgency rises on Humanoids to use his ultimate to hit side lanes, and on Kaiser once again on his all-star that completely took over game three to take over game four. Can Kaiser dominate the initiations once more? Rogue have their backs against the wall. As if they lose this game, they will drop down to the lower bracket and await Fnatic or Schalke. If Rogue pick up this win, we go to game five for the second time this weekend. Players are loading up onto the rift. Pressure is on Rogue. They were the pre-series favorites. They were the highest seed coming into the playoffs. And right now, they are one defeat away from dropping. It's Rogue versus Mad Lions. Ooh, 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 look at this, bottom lane. Mad Lions, five man rushing down. Do they find anything? Trevor, it's a battle for bot lane supremacy. Mad Lions know it's all about the 2v2 in bot. This ward, oh so common, will spot out the move. Of course, Kaiser waiting to see if Trimby would potentially step forward into that brush. At the end of the day, Rogue will not bite, and we won't see that explosive start we almost had. But actually, as everyone steps into the bush, Surely you have to know that there could have been a ward in there. All those players get seen resetting. So while Rogue initially weren't actually tempted to walk into the topside jungle, put down any vision of their own, now they do walk in. Didn't place any wards. They've uh, they've got plenty of time to do whatever they want with this early game. But again, another very big signal. You know, when we were talking in between the games, we were talking about the bottom lane and just how important it has been and how once a bot lane, the duo gets ahead, it is just such a powerful tool to push the advantage for either Rogue in game one or Mad in game two and three. And you could not get a bigger signal from Mad Lions out the gate about what they want to do. Managed to push Hans Sama and Trimby back, but it doesn't work out this time. I mean, we've seen 2v2 kills in this bot lane every single game, early on as well, early, early levels. They're gonna fight again. Yeah. They're absolutely gonna fight again. Is the engage, the flay comes back, pulverize comes out as well, and it's not gonna be anything further. In actual fact, Mad lose that one. Yeah, I mean I see this every time we see a phase rush all-star. The early, you know, level one all in. Not necessarily the greatest uh situation for the all-star to be in. I think Mad Line's trying to make use that well, the other keystone they have, Halo Blade's very good for those early scraps, but it's rogue that get dominance over the bot wave. And again, notice that Elyoya is going to be pathing towards the top side, inspired pathing down bot. So Karzi and Kaiser going to be at a disadvantage for the time being. Elyoya actually started on his own wolf camp to go leashless, uh, something you can do on the Lilia, very similar to starting on your Raptors. Uh, but again, the early jungling is going to be difficult for El Yoya because mid lane, bot lane, both have full push here for Rogue, and the only strong area of the map for the time being is top for Mad. How important is it for Inspired to and Rogue to get ahead with this Nidalee pick? You know, I am interpreting this as one of the crucial things that has to go well for Rogue in the early game. But I want to know exactly what we wanted to do. Look, there's there's a few different things that make Nidalee very strong in the early game. Obviously, her clear speed going to be great. Her ability to invade, take away camps, and shut down the enemy jungler, also good. Other things you can do, drive by ganks with your spear, getting your helping your lane get more priority with Larson pushing in mid lane. You know, whenever uh, Inspired goes for an invade into the enemy jungle, well, you can chuck a spear over the wall, these sorts of things, play for turret plates, whatnot, early objectives. Like, uh, again, it's less of a, we're going to gank every lane, and it's more, we're going to support my lane when they're pushing. We're going to make sure that El Yoya can't gank, and with that pressure, go for the invades. Every single time a buff is spawning, I expect to see Inspired, in true Inspired fashion, be ready to make some sort of move. I really like that. It's about enabling Rogue's ability to control the game. And for anyone that's watched the entire series, Rogue, throughout the course of the spring season, had the, some of the most impressive early game stats, and it's how they picked up the first and only win 
they've secured this series. You look at the mini-map, Aluria clearing out the top scuttle, while Inspired's on the bottom. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really interesting when you look at Inspired as jungler compared to a lot of other junglers in the league. As, uh, well, now he's going to be looking for a bot lane play. See, you drive by Spear yeah. whenever you go for the invade. And uh, potentially a dive here, too. Karzi doesn't have a heal, has a cleanse, but they aren't going to bite off that play. Inspired will just go for the reset, but this is a sign of things to come, especially mid lane, which gets super volatile. Uh, Larson level six, of course, can do so much damage. So if he's chunking out Humanoid, these spears can be the, the tipping point, the, the thing that makes Larson decide, now I go for that early all in. And unlike our three previous games, with the Lucian and the Twisted Fate, we now want to start to take a look at once they get access to their ultimates, once they're able to push the waves, how do they roam? How do they invade? And importantly, how does Larson support Inspire? Yeah, and, and that's sort of the point I was trying to get at earlier is that you look at some of the other top junglers in the league, right? And you have a Yankos that traditionally sacrifices itself to support his lanes, to enable them. Then you have a self-made whose lanes sacrifice themselves yes. to enable self-made. And inspired, and the rogue way is very much give and take. So, so Larson will be pushing in mid, inspired, make sure he's there so he can get the safe push. Then he goes to the invade, and then Larson is also following him. And it, and it very much is this give and take with them where inspired can fill these multiple roles for the team and often is so crucial in them being so successful in the early game. And it is really important for Rogue to demonstrate that now when they are under pressure. One of the signs of a truly competitive, truly successful, truly top tier team is the ability to deliver under pressure. Yesterday, G2 were forced as hard as they could. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Five. And right now, Armut and Alyoria, they're going to run down uh, Odoamne for an easy first blood. The kill has looked like it's going to be donated over to Armut, and that's just well timed from Armut. I mean, Alyoria. it's just a, a brilliant E flash buffer there from Armut in the center of the minion wave. Odoamne they did not see that coming at all. So really nice early gank from El Yoya. And you know what? The man, even when he's on the Lilia, the scaling pick, the farming jungle pick, we yeah. said, hey, he's not the Volibear. He doesn't have to get any ganks off. Well, he still finds a way to make his mark. I would have been a lot more afraid if it wasn't a Scion. Uh, we've seen just how effective the undead farming Scions can be. So yes, great first move by Mad Lions. They build themselves up 600 gold lead and Armut already starting to be unlocked. We've also seen the power of top lane Urgot from Gen X just a few days ago. And Mad Lions now are pushing this bottom wave in. It looks like Han Summer not trying to insta-clear it. While on the minimap, I'm still looking at Inspired. He's coming in behind Humanoid. Javelin Toss will force the flash away as Humanoid had the gold card primed. Really good spear. And again, when I say level six for Larson, that's when you start to get some real kill threat before the poke comes through. So good spear there forces the flash out of Humanoid. And he's also trying to play for Scuttle Crab, but because he went for the gank before Crab, now Kaiser has moved over. Now Humanoid is porting in. Destiny, the gate, the gold card. Kaiser's got flash just too far on the range and Inspired's able to escape. Yeah, and there's a world where they ask Kaiser to like flash head but pull Vin, but Inspired just yeah. trades flash and the flash on all are infinitely more valuable than on that Nidalee. Down towards the bot side, oh, good hook. Oh, Trimby's found the death sentence, the flay, Kazi forced a flash, the lantern will bring Hunt Summer forward and that javelin went way wide. Jump over the wall, oh. flash over, flash follow from Inspired. Nobody else has died just yet and Armut not going to be able to find the ultimate. He actually fired it, but I didn't think... Uh, I, I think he hit Larson there with we go. Thank even. You. And honestly, just both junglers, instantaneous flash, they're both so good. Oh man, bot side, Karzi almost got caught, used his flash, not the cleanse, to escape from that one, but Yoya continuing pressure around mid, continuing to wait for a good gold card. Oh, let's take a look what happens here. If Alyoya can find a move forward on a non-standard gank. Yeah, he's, he's back the to the moves. Raptor camp. That's his real prize. And I think important to highlight here, yes, uh, Armut was the person who picked up the first kill of the game, but by moving into the middle lane, he's now lost a couple of waves up top. It's a small CS advantage for Odo Wamne. And, and a crucial difference I've felt like in, in the last few games between these teams is how the junglers and supports work together. I, I mentioned this briefly in the last game, but you saw how well El Yoy and Kaiser in game three work together to completely take over the map. Then this game, again, it's Kaiser moving through River, stopping Inspired on the Scuttle Crab. Now, that didn't immediately mean that there was a lot of kills. I think Humanoid's ultimate was very ambitious going for that play that Inspired could easily get out of. But I need to see if Rogue are going to legitimately contest Mad Lions in an even game state. Trimby and Inspired have to work well together. It has to be done in order for them to really control the map. Well, take a look at the move. Hansama and Trimby, they've already swapped. Uh, it looks like Kazi and Kaiser will be matching. Minor CS advantage for Hansama for the time being, and Armut was almost caught by that death sentence. Would have just interrupted his recall and not had a huge impact. But what do you make of the swap here? As it feels to me like it's priority for the Herald. Well, it certainly is that. 
And uh, honestly, Rogue may have actually been hoping that they would get flip-flop lanes, you know, just the Herald yeah. trade for the Dragon, especially playing Odwamne towards the bot side sign. Very good on the weak side in the 1v2 and the 1v3 situation. Hansama is level 6, but doesn't have the, the great guns for the all-in for the time being. So Rogue not necessarily looking to punch just yet. Humanoid still 20 seconds, 30 seconds away from the ulti Ooh. being ready, but that's not stopping Mad Lions from no, looking for a not. play. Kaiser's gonna find the flash headbutt, pulverized combination. Trippy's moving backwards as Inspired's found Humanoid. Managed to get the pounce and the swipe. Hans Summer will pick up the kill onto Al Yoyo after losing Trimby, and here comes Lawson. He picks up the second. That's Hans Summer with a double. Kaiser's the next one to fall. A triple kill for Aphelios. Rogue saw that play coming from a mile away, and now Hans Summer is turbo fed out of his mind, getting the triple on the top side. While Inspired gets the solo bolo over towards Humanoid. That's a giant leap of momentum for Rogue. Man, Hunt Summer burned through all the ammo necessary to get the key weaponary, weapons rather, to fight in that 1v3 scenario. The damage that Inspired landed onto Humanoid as well allowed him to pick up that solo. Well, Chirpy actually had the crescendo to begin with, which usually isn't oh. great for like going on the offensive, but when they walk into you, sure, yes. man, that's great for grinding down Mad Lions. You love to see that. Now, Mad Lions right back onto the map. No smite for Inspired, and again, Kaiser's here and Karzi's here. Mad Lion's doing so much to enable their jungler, and yet Rogue want to fight once Trimby's more. Trimby stepping all the way forward. The box has come down. Destiny and Gate delivers the gold card onto Trimby. The wild cards don't do enough damage, and it's Kaiser that is sent packing. The fourth kill secured by Rogue. Huge. The fourth kill on Han Sama. The man's fed out of his mind. I mean, we looked at the first couple games. Karzi's Jinx. Well, I'll do you one better for the late game hyper carry. The Aphelios with all this money early on. 1,800 gold lead over Karzi and the CS difference is massive too. Karzi's lost so much over the course of these plays over Kaiser leaving the lane and they're going to continue to beat down on the turret plates too because there's a there's oh, a Rift man. Herald in Inspired's pocket. And look at that damage. Kraken Slayer completes just into a Noon Quiver attack speed dagger. That is it. Hans Sama 30 CS up. Herald was picked up as well. And it's just, it's such a great position here for Rogue. I mean, how on earth do you deal with it? And then you think about the range as well, right? Like, Urga wants to be in your face, Kaiser in your face, Alistair in your face. And Aphelios is one of the best champions to be in that scenario. Yeah, Inspire getting both objectives now, too. And this is exactly what Rogue needed. When you go for the Nidalee plus Illusion around mid, you have to pop early. And honestly, they weren't very explosive in their early play. But watching Mad Lions try to send everything into the top lane, Rogue know that Mad Lions' game plan is to make the early game explosive. So they just have to wait for their critical moment. Hansama and Trimby playing it very, very well to stay alive towards the top side of the map, while the rest of Rogue were just waiting to counterattack. And that means Rogue at 11 minutes have got a gigantic lead. Hans Summer's starting to step forward. Trimby and Inspired are nearby. Alma does have Flash available to him. Sidesteps the Javelin toss. Three members of Rogue push forward and the flay was a little short. And they'll still get the Flash out of Alma, which will be a small win. While all that's going on, by the way, Odawamne left uncontested in the top lane, continuing to just farm up, build up to be a little bit of a beefy front line, and as long as he can keep Hunt Summer alive, he's doing his job just and, fine. and you have to ask yourself, like, how are Rogue, you know, winning a flash on the bot side? How are they also getting a lot top side? Good play. That was very good. And a double sleep, oh boy. Lilting Lullaby, Cleanse comes out from Hunt Summer. He's firing out with the oh, flame. The damage. the damage is so huge. With that Moonlight Vigil, Inspired Hell picks up a second onto Armut. And Hans Sama just spits fire onto Mad Lions. It's been a little while since we've got the 200 years experience, but Hans Sama's coming in with the extra item update on top of the Kraken Slayer to cut down through Mad. And the setup, it looks good again for the Mad Lions. You know, El Yoya, perfect swirl seed here, hits both, gets the sleep on both the support and the AD carry. It doesn't get better than that, but the hook onto the Urgot slows down Armut's engage. It also buys time for Hans Sama to press the cleanse button, turn it around. The, the, the Spirit of Land from Inspired. It's everything you could ask for in a 3v4 for Rogue. And so crucial for Trimby as well. After missing that uh, flay onto Armour just a little bit earlier, that time round interrupts a potential engage. Hunt Summer with the pixel perfect cleanse. Backs off 5 0 1 now. And it's four and a half thousand gold lead. And you ask yourself why. If you, if you rewind the clock two, three minutes, when Rogue went for the initial gank onto Armut and got his flash, it was when Mad Lines had all reset. So in top lane, Odwamne was full shoving the wave. Yeah and whacking down the turret. Then Mad Lions came back onto the map, like, let's go, guys, let's frag out in bot lane, let's go for the fight. Then they lose the fight, and the whole time Odo is still in top lane. So not only were Mad Lions losing kills and whatnot, and 
beating this Aphelios, they lost every wave in top lane, they lost their turret, Humanoid even started walking bot lane and lost his waves in mid too. Yeah, and please don't don't forget the fact that this entire series has been defined by which of these bottom lanes has been able to get ahead. Now, it's been different variations and reasons as to why they got ahead, but after Rogue initiated the swap top, Mad Lions matched. They threw their champions up top. Mad Lions were making a move onto Han Sama and Oh, Trubi. the spear, I love it. Even on the ward, every time. Every single time. Inspired just wants to play around that. And just to finish the thought, Mad Lions were making the move onto the top lane for Han Sama and Trimby. They got punished for it. And now they are the ones that have to find some way back into this game, down 4,000 gold. I mean, Mad Lions are so scared of Inspired's invades. Armut took red buff while the blue buff was happening so that Inspired couldn't then run back topside and get that too. Uh, I do a slight critique on Inspired for dropping the Herald so late. Did not get any of the turret plates in mid lane. I do not believe so. Lost out a bit on the extra gold, but Rogue are still in such a comfortable position. And the thing is, their comp doesn't necessarily, like usually you'd say, oh, maybe it's it's a little bit more difficult to team fight with the Nidalee and the Lucian later on into the game. But because Aphelios is so strong, that won't become a reality until so much later into yeah. the game than it normally would. I mean, look at the item disparities here. Mythics across the board for Rogue. Only one right now for Mad Lions, and it is definitely not the sexiest to speak oh, of. Oh yeah, I got the Shirelia's exactly. Reverie, guys, let's go. That's my point. That power spike is not yet activated. And there's three members of Mad Lions looking at Han Summer in the bottom lane a moment ago, and he had red, white guns primed. I think they backed away, looked at that and went, nope, do not want to pick that fight, as the first tower of the game will fall just after 15 minutes. And coming into this game, and uh, we said we wanted to see control. We wanted to see calculated play from Rogue. Go back to that consistent performance we saw throughout spring. I think we've seen that so far for the first 15 minutes. Now they do need to push this advantage further, make sure they push their vision into Mad Lion's uh, side of the jungle. And because it's so early on, they will have to buy just a little bit of time before they can start playing on the next big objectives. And, and, and honestly, like looking back, you know, on on Han Sama and this Aphelios pick in particular, like Han Sama might actually be, he's one of for sure our best Aphelios players in the LEC. He might be our best Aphelios player as well. Like I, he's got so many insane highlight reels of those 1v3, 1v4 turnarounds. I think we were even casting yes. one that happened in the bot lane, completely caught everyone by surprise. Trimby and Inspired are working together. This is exactly what I wanted to see. A couple teleports coming down. Trimby flashes away, but it won't be enough to keep him alive. Kazi fires out some Akethian Raid and then runs for his life. A kill, a TP, and potentially a dragon here for Rogue. And it's necessary to have this jungle support synergy when you're playing, you know, a, a very fast-paced jungler like the Nidalee, when you want to get into the enemy jungle, because it's very easy as the Nidalee to walk in there, take away camps, but to get kills, you need your team. And now Odo in the 1v3. Well, the dragon will be secured here by Rogue. Interrupt the unstoppable onslaught. Odo still got flash hops over the wall, continues to run for his life before he's put to sleep by Al Yoya. Humanoid gets yet a Another gold card out, and the fear beyond death will secure a kill for Armut, but allowing the rest of Rogue to pick up the dragon to push deep vision into the bottom lane, as oh, well as man. potentially find Kazi. <laughs> Kazi just stares Trimby in the eyes and says, you shall not pass, and the death sentence doesn't find its target. That's my favorite kind of juke. Kazi just staring down the death sentence. You'll love to see it. And, and I mean, Honestly, so it, it's a good moment for Mad, because right now you can't play the same side of the map as Rogue. You have to go for the cross map. So not only do they get the kill, but also the Rift Kill. That's good news. But I just find it so funny watching how Rogue respond in the cross map. Obviously, they're already on the Dragon, but then looking for the bot gank, you even had Larson after full pushing the mid wave, instead of instantly recalling, he walked over to Raptor Camp to see if it was up. If it's up, the enemy Raptor Camp, by the way, steal that away while the enemy team's all ganking top lane, because the man is out here to farm as fast as humanly possible. And I don't think there's been a game in recent memory, actually, Rogue G2, where Larson didn't have the most CS in the game. <laughs> I mean, if you think about Rogue's style, though, it is kind of that quintessential control. You know, they, I, I've used this word a lot this series, and it's about like suffocating. It's about stealing away anything that Mad Lions could look to play. Their jungle, their minions, their, their, their waves. And Rogue have deprioritized things like Dragon to ensure that they push forward the vision when they're in a lead, when they're in control of a game, to play around things like Baron. You can see 18 minutes into the game, this 5,500 gold lead, Baron's not even an objective yet. And with the Scion, a very fed Hans Sama, Aphelios, plus the Nidalee and Lucian, that will be a huge, huge, huge concern and pain 
for Mad Lions to try to defend and slow down. Yeah, and as they, they slice up the map, get the deep vision, it, it means that your inner church is so much more isolated. Hold up. All right, that looks like Inspired is in trouble. Trippy is making his way for Death Sentence comes out, He's catches out. onto Kaiser. Inspired's able to escape with his life and only cost the flash. He makes it out. Yeah, I believe Inspired soaked up pretty much the entire sleep duration there with his Zonias, so dodged away from a whole lot of that. Mad Lions, I mean, Kaiser mechanically executed that perfectly. Just brilliant play to knock Inspired into the team, but it was not enough, and that's a lot blown there for the Mad Lions. <laughs> Hansama, you know, he's got the white and he's ready to go. He doesn't even care about the tower. Stepping forward on the minimap support from Rogue, making its way up, and a little bit of defense from Mad Lions, but the Lilting Lullaby is not available. Hans Summer will start to back away with the help of Trimby. And you can see what I mean, because the, the inner church is so much uh, more closely connected than yes. the outer church. Once you've removed that entire outer line and you control the jungle, it's so isolating when you're on the side of Mad Lions and trying to farm underneath your tower, because Rogue are always going to beat your team on the rotations, always be threatening to pick you off, so they have to take the long way through their base if they're going to help out. And Karzi feels very, very vulnerable in that side, Armut. He's trying to find a clever place to reset, but there's a lot of people hunting him down. You know that he's there. It feels like it. Inspired starting to make his way around. Starts the recall, and maybe they aren't 100% aware. <laughs> yeah. So Armour will escape with his life for now. And Rogue are now in a very commanding position. That thought starts to creep into the back of Mad Lion's minds. Game five, deciding match. Obviously, this one is not technically over yet, but it is such a monumentally difficult task to come back from. When you look at champions like Lucian, like Aphelios, who are doing exceptional, plus 50 CS in the mid lane, plus 30 CS and excluding 502. Look at the experience and level differences here as well. Look, Trevor, it, it's it's crazy how much control Rogue have over the game. And there's this concept in chess, space. It's basically like how much control you have over the pieces on the opponent's side of the board. And if you look at the minimap, Mad Lions have no space. They are not past the halfway point anywhere on the map. It's like Dwayne The Rock Johnson trying to fly Ryan Air. There is just no space. <laughs> it just does not work at all. And even if you were to close and figure some of that out, the pieces will not add up. Oh, that's a root. That is going to be a root landed there from Hans Summer. They're not going to chase further than they need to, despite some vision. If they had Nidalee there, that's a kill. Inspired yes. wasn't quite with the team, but still a good look. And Larson feels very, very strong, very, very confident. I mean, he's pushing forward. He's tagging the odd in place. Still has the culling available to him. And 21 minutes in, Dragon number three is available in 40 seconds. Baron is now available as well. And this, be, this may be one of the first games of the series that actually make our way towards a full Dragon Soul. But before we can get there, Hansama's ult is on cooldown. Dash forward onto Humanoid. Goes golden thanks to the stopwatch. Teleport now starting to be channeled, but that is a win here for Rogue. There's no space to play around. There's no moves for Mad Lions. Uh, Mad Lions want this. Destiny flash. That'll force the flash from Larson. And Kaiser's looking for an initiation, but he simply can't do it. Swing and a miss for Mad Lions. Yeah, slightly better vision there. Humanoid maybe can put his ultimate in a different place to catch Larson, regardless of the flash, but he takes the safe road, which you can't necessarily criticize him for. The dragon is going to be spawning. That's the third of the game for Rogue. Gem, Mad Lions are still trying to contest Vision in the area. They have to be so careful, though, because they've got practically no wards. Just this Pixel Brush ward that will be cleared away, and now the TP comes through from Larson. Rogue want nothing to do with the Mad Lions. Force them out of their jungle. You're not coming close. Take a quick glance at the itemization differences here. Mad Lions do not fancy the fight. This is Dragon number three. This is not the one worth fighting over. You get a few more minutes to farm. If you can see this, you get a few more minutes to set up for the Infernal Soul fight. And that is the path that Mad Lions elect. Now that gold difference, while it is shrinking minutely, I do have to ask about some scaling and some compositional differences here. Obviously factoring an incredibly fed Aphelios, but what do you make of Mad Lions composition as we start to move towards these potential 5v5s and also the fact they're still down in gold? Honestly, the, the game's uh, a little bit difficult to read, I feel like, because there's so much like individual agency on a lot of the characters because like Inspired is so fed. Usually you'd say, again, in the team fights, Nidalee is going to struggle a lot, but if he lands a spear onto El Yoya, Humanoid, or Karzi, he's always going to have a, a either not necessarily kill threat, but tons of damage threat enough to get them away from the fight. And if Inspired is zoning Karzi or any of those three players, it's always a win because compositionally, those three champions should yeah. be stronger than he Nidalee in a 5v5. At the same time, Han Sama is so insanely massive that if he's not being blown up by Mad Lions at the start of the fight, composition errors don't matter because Han Sama has Flash, Cleanse, a Thresh Lantern, and he's a Belly 
Vegas. You can't you beat can that. You can hit him with your wallet. Literally, just item gap them. As the second item was just picked up here for Kazi, as Hans Sam is making his way towards third. Three and a half minutes till the next dragon. A mad line setting up for a potential play, but Humanoid may just get caught out here. Roar of the Slayer will slow him down. Not going to get knocked up yet as W will go up. Gets caught by the decimating oh, smash. Yes. And because of the decimating smash, the Javelin won't find his target. Humanoid's able to run for his life. The Shirelius keeps him alive. Flash okay. forward from Inspired and finally takes him down. The fight's not over yet as that's the flash engage. Odo channeling the Q. Forces out the flash from Kazi. The chase forward from the rest of Rogan. Inspired throws out a Javelin. This time round will not find its target. The ulti from Hans Sama will just push Mad back. And that may open up Baron. Yeah, Mad Lines are low enough that Rogue can move over to Baron. It's white, gu run, white gun, red gun for Hans Sama. So two of the best you can have for shredding down this Baron. Mad Lines will have to walk into Rogue and that is where they will meet their doom. They have to come up with a miracle. But frankly, Han Sama is untouchable. Oduama trying to body block. No ulti, no flash. That's like engaged there from Kaiser. Odo slowly being burnt down. Swirl Seed will not find any targets. That's a gutter ball from Mad Lions, but they've stopped the Baron. They've bought more time, and that is what they need, crucially. But every time one of those spears goes out, I hold my breath, because <laughs> that can be game-changing. Yeah, the thing is, human has, Humanoid has TP, so he could get back onto the map. Even though Mad Lions were low, Rogue were losing HP to the Baron. Oduomne was trying to zone away, so they didn't really have a tank to soak it up, so Ansama was just trying to heal back as much as he could. I think Hansama has an Infinity Edge here, by the way, sitting on a lot of money. Let me double check it. And uh, yeah, he does have the IE to come on through. So three items on that Aphilios, five kills to his name. And you saw in the last fight, Rogue can just run down Mad Lines. They're, they're hard engaged tools, not the best necessarily apart. You know, Scion's not too bad, but not the most reliable of tools when there's a lot of mobility on the other side. Threshook too, unless Mad Lines are coming into you, can be hard to land. So actually closing out this game may prove a little bit more difficult for Rogue, but I think it's all gonna come down to playing around the Infernal Drake in two minutes. The Baron, a little bit risky to invite your, the enemy team into you. The Infernal Soul, not that hard. And of course, if you are a Mad Lions fan, that is great news for you. You, you want to buy some time. Destiny used here by Humanoid is pushing very deep on the bottom yeah, lane. Humanoid's destiny is that bot wave. Yeah. Okay, he's going to clear that out and then use his ulti to port out. He's, it's a minute and a half until Soul, right? So it's no problem for him to waste that. Humanoid and a sign lane, a more iconic duo. Never seen them as often together. Now, this time around, with a minute and a half, let's look at the vision, let's look at the setup. Both teams have backed, picked up what they can, and now they're going to start setting up some vision, but not at the cost of Baron. Yeah, it's a good hook, but Larson's bot lane. I said it was a waste of the ult. It really wasn't because it forced Larson to go back bot side. That means, of course, you don't have that big damage dealer there for Rogue. So Rogue take things a little bit easily. Coming into this fight, though, Flash is going to be back for Larson. Inspired, Odo, Trimby, those guys don't have it. And those are the, the big playmakers, I would say, in the tense of setting up for your team, but... That's trouble. And uh, now Kaiser will not have his ultimate coming yes. into this fight. That is a huge deal. Very big. The he might not have his just life. Just about to time out. Cullen comes out. The Moonlight Vigil bursts his loss and then picks up the kill. 45 seconds until the Infernal Soul and Kaiser is down. He will respawn before the Dragon, but will not be able to make it there Oh, in time. Drift King! Not going to find a target just yet. Zoto will get stunned up, but it is a tower secured by Rogue. They can continue the pressure. 20 seconds before Kaiser is up. Hans Summer may be able Big to spear. down Humanoid, but there's no further follow-up. Yeah, half HP down onto El Yoya. 25 seconds on the Infernal, and Kaiser will be alive, but he won't have his ultimate. There's no vision. There's one ward in the river there for Madline. They know Rogue haven't left their jungle just yet, but soon that will be gone. And Humanoid may be the next target for Rogue. They want to push him away from the mini wave. They want to walk that all the way up mid and say, Mad Lions, you must clear this before entering the jungle. And even then, this dragon is going to be gone so fast. This is the Infernal Soul into a Nidalee Lucian Aphelios that are fair. Double now, it has sleep. been started. This will be a fight. The lullaby has been put down, but there's no follow-up. They're not there quickly enough. Destiny will be able to give some vision. The Flay pulls onward backwards, and Odo is taken out by Kazi, but zombie side. They're just bursting the Drake. Zone it away. Drake is the focus. Infernal Soul is secured by Rogue. Now, what can Mad Lions do? Lost Humanoid it. on the That's back. That's a great engage from Kaiser. Humanoid throws up the wild card. There's down. not enough damage. There's simply not enough to deal with Lawson as well as Hans Summer. But now all of a sudden, almost turned it around. Humanoid can do it. Down. Inspired may not be able to.
to finish it out. Armored and Humanoid, they managed to make it work. They managed to kill the carries. It was such good team fighting. The two of them inspired lands the hook and destroys Humanoid. It's one survivor on both sides, and yet it is Rogue that come away with the Infernal Soul. From a deficit, Madlines put together a brilliant team fight off the back of both Humanoid and Armut, but it is not enough to get El Yoya to the pit and to get past Inspired Smite. Let's watch this fight once again, because again, El Yoya all game one, landing these multi-man sleeps, and this time hitting the front line. And at the end, it's gonna be Humanoid's repositioning to just be a pain on Larson that causes them so much issue because they get Han Sama, and that's the win condition for Mad Lion. So Humanoid backs up in the fight. He then pops the Destiny, ports in underneath Han Sama. Hans has no idea this is coming. Kaiser zones two away from the carry, and that allows Karzi to get into the back lane and kill Hans. Great work from Kaiser to set up, and then Armut just trashing the other two on the bottom side. It's Inspired Trimby, not a ton of damage, and Humanoid Zonias gets that next cycle of the card forces Larson off him. Without the Zonias, Larson wins that fight. With the Zonias, it's Humanoid all the way. I completely underestimated the damage of that Purge. Armut in the pit, just able to dance around. Look at that damage coming out from the entire team. And once again, Kaiser. Kaiser, Kaiser, Kaiser. His initiations on the Alistair are fantastic. The problem is, despite how great that fight ultimately went, considering the deficit, it is still an Infernal Soul picked up by Rogue. Four minutes until the Elder Dragon, and look at the damage on Kazi as now Rogue are setting up to play around Baron. At the same time, though, let's check out the gold because Karzi's only a little bit behind Hansama at this point. Yeah, it's about 1.2k, and I think he got the, the shutdown onto Hans, which was so, so valuable for him. So now Karzi is pumping out the DPS. He's got Armut in the top lane, too, with 12,000 gold to his name. That's no joke, and they're going to Larson. All right, Larson's going to be the next target. Gold card will tag him and there's enough members of Rogue making their way. Can Armor get the fear beyond death? Dash is forward, not gonna be able to find a rogue and make it. Got him. Way they will be able to find themselves a kill, but what will it cost? Teleports available for humanoid and rogue decide not to chase. They turn around and try to burn down Kaiser. Unbreakable will is up. There's no ulti from Armut and he's gonna be the focus of inspired and Hansama that's engaged that's Kazi jumping all the way forward but he's pulled up he's taken up by Hans Hans stays alive just long enough to watch the rest of his teammates die and finally Yoda one that goes down that's gonna be the ace for Mad Lions, they're right back into this game. Mad Lions are doing everything in their power to stay alive here, and it's Humanoid and Armut. After the team fight that they won for their team, they see Larson and they kill Larson in the side lane. They chase him down the entire way against an Infernal Soul. They don't care. It's Mad Lions on the Baron. Mad Lions create the chaos. The chaos disrupts Rogue's ability to control the game, and it is Mad Lions who are superior in those scenarios. We knew coming in from the draft, both teams got what they wanted. Larson, lane dominant mid laner, push it out, help out your jungler with a TP in now from Larson. It will not be enough. He doesn't even have the calling to go in. But on the other side, it is Humanoid with the global playmaking that destroys your timings and destroys when you try to play multiple lanes at the same time. Armut lands the ultimate off of Humanoid's gold card, and then with the Shrelias, they can just chase this sucker down. Rogue are trying so hard on this mad dash to help their mid laner that they don't even realize Kaiser's on the flank. You hook him in, he's just setting up for you all to die in this tight choke. Karzi is able to fly over the wall and finish off this fight. It is picture perfect from Matt. It really is. Mad Lions on the precipice of knocking a Rogue down to the lower bracket, on the precipice of a rematch with G2. And they're now they're pushing in. forward. There's so much damage under Trimby, but Larson will fire off the culling. A minute and 45 seconds until Elder. Little Ting Lullaby will not be fired. There's no targets put to sleep just yet. And Armut will get knocked up here by the Decimating Smash. Mad Lions have a gold lead, and they don't even have the mid lane turn it yet they are out team fighting rogue with every single advantage thrown rogue's way han sama so insanely fred from the start of the game the map pressure has been rogues the whole time the <laughs> the infernal soul as well and yet time and time again rogue are denied humanoid running the same play back pushes out bot lane uses his ulti for the vision and the escape and what does that do well it means that off the reset the rest of his team can get vision 
around the map because so many players of Rogue are moving towards the bot lane, seeing, oh, can we pick this guy? Can we get him? It leaves you vulnerable in other areas. All right, ultimate used there by Odo. A minute to go until the Elder Dragon fight. Mad Lion do not want to concede that. They are already dealing with an Infernal Soul, and their Baron power buff will just about time out. That is such a fantastic graph. Thank you, production, showing the gold difference over time. Armut is going to chuck Odo over his shoulder. Kaiser knocks him up. Get over here as Armut is dominating. 7, 1, and 2 with 30 seconds till Elder. And there's 45 seconds on Odo Omni. Mad Lions may just get this. They still have the Baron for another minute, so they can keep charging down mid. They finally get the mid lane tower, and Mad Lions remain on match point. Look to send Rogue to the lower bracket and face G2 next week. Kaiser continues to sprint forward to zone Rogue away, and now it is Mad Lions past the halfway point with all the space in the world. They've got exactly oh, what they need. Oh, they've managed to catch Rogue up for the time being, pushed through the jungle. Tons of vision for Rogue to be fully aware of where the Mad Lions are going. Mad will take the tower advantage. The gold Ten advantage. Ten seconds on the TP, but the this Elder. goes fast. This is going to be very, very scary. Can it spike? Looking Kaiser on magical. the flank. Kaiser's looking for an engage. He's got the hex splash available. Oh. It's Mad Lions that are able to pick up the Elder. Now it is all of a sudden on Rogue. They're backing out. They've lost Inspired Teleport coming in from Odo. He rejoins the team. It's Baron. It's Elder. It's Mad Lions looking to knock down Rogue. Oh my word, Rogue. They even killed Karzi, but staring down the Elder Soul on Mad Lions cannot continue the fight. Mad Lions, throw up the gold because it is looking crazy now. And before you do that, we have to ask in chat, who will win Rogue or Mad type RGE or MAD? If you're a Rogue fan, you might be MAD because this is continuing to stack more and more in favor of Mad. It really is. Mad Lions from a 5,000 gold deficit have played from behind, have played into what I think was a 5-0-1, a Felios, and it hasn't mattered. One of the players that we've not spoken about a huge amount because, frankly, the draft hasn't necessarily been about Armut. His Urgot this <laughs> game a is a machine. Armut is one of the players that joined the Mad Lions roster this year and is surprising so many people coming into this BO5, is stepping up when his team needs it, and is now so close to winning the series. In a series that has been completely defined by the bot lanes, in this final game, potentially, Mad Lion's solo lanes were the ones to step up and shut down the rogue bot laner, Han Sama. Now, they continue to press forward with one Kaiser. minute left on the Elder, and the chat has spoken. 82% for Mad Lions. Yeah, I mean, like, you can't doubt right now the tower will fall in the top lane every time Kaiser puts his hand in the air and starts channeling that Hex Flash. I panic for Rogue. Armour dashes forward. The minion wave is taken out. Five towers secured. Man lines continue to pressure. One and a half minutes until Baron. You asked me earlier, is the scaling advantages for Mad a concern for Rogue? And it wasn't when Han Sama was miles ahead of the competition. But now he is almost dead even in gold with Karzi. It doesn't matter anymore. This, this Aphelios is not miles ahead of the competition. And now Rogue have to put together the perfect fight to overcome the Mad Lion Siege. And the ability to find an impact on Nidalee versus the ability to find an impact Han on Sama. Lilia is gigantic. Han Sama's ulti does so much. Oh, they charge! Through. Unstoppable onslaught comes forward. Han Sama remains on touch for now, Kaiser sleep. catches him! Kaiser catches him, two members of Rogue are put to sleep. Larson finds one as all of a sudden Mad Lions on the retreat. It is everybody dying and finally Mad Lions in the advantage. Finally Mad Lions find four! It is just Larson on the other side. He's getting flashed on El Yoya wants to end this game, end this series right here now. Larson is on the run. He's on the sprint to try and survive, but it's Mad Lions with three strong in the base. Put yourself in these players' shoes and think about how difficult these team fights are. There is not enough time to find the words to explain what is happening on screen. But Kaiser, time and time and time again, shows that he is the initiation king in this series today. The story with these two organizations has always been, you know, they face off against each other, Rogue, the control, Mad Lions, the crazy. If Mad Lions Mad Lions often win in the early game, and yet Rogue beat them later through excellent map play, through excellent team fighting. This game, it is the complete inverse. It is Mad Lions showing up with better map play, with better team fighting to shut down Rogue and slice them apart. Now Rogue are sprinting back onto the map towards the Baron, and it will be a 5v5 brawl for the objective. Against all expectations, against all predictions, Mad Lions, against all odds in this game, 
Mad Lions are now 5k gold up. They are still dealing with an Infernal Soul Rogue, but frankly, they Looking don't Kaiser on the flank. Damn. This guy has been such a machine, and it's another potential sleep. He hits two targets. Humanoids porting in. Kaiser's looking forward. No flash for Hans Summer. Follow him. Gold Cart catches him out. Insta Cleanse will come down with the QSS. Rather inspired. It's going to be the next one. He gets caught by follow up Gold Cart. Two members of Rogue. It's not even down. close. The third is taken out. A dash forward from Larson. Yes, you get El Yoya, but at the cost of Baron and at the cost of three members of Rogue. Mad Lions may very well look to end the game right here. It is Larson, the timeless carry for Rogue, and Hansama, the carry for Rogue in this game, but it's a two versus four, and the Mad Lions look unstoppable. 10,000 gold lead now after a 5,000 gold deficit. Mad Lions were obliterated in game number one and are on the precipice of a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back series win. Hansama and Larson are on the defense. They're pushing backwards. Mad Lions have done it. They've got Larson. They've got Hansama. They've aced Rogue, and Mad Mad Lions will have a rematch with G2! How did they pull that off? That is one of the most impressive comebacks I have seen. Just incredible play all around. Like, the, the way th that one team fight where Humanoid ports in the back, where they, they single out Hansama, Karzi sacrifices his life just to get the kill on the enemy KD carry. They win that fight. They are given hope. And then with the TF ultimate again, using it to just dominate the map, this pick that had been banned the entire series, and the solo laners of Mad Lions who step up in the clutch and get the team across the finish line. I am at a loss for words at how those team fights played out. The number of things that went right, every single fight for Mad Lions, the number of different angles and perspectives, and yet their target selection remained flawless. Every single member of Mad Lions knew what they had to do. And in that melee, they just found the key targets every single time. Trevor, there are some games where you go in and things just fall into place. This was not one of those games. This was a game where every single player on Mad Lions forced it to go the right way in order to climb back from a monstrous deficit. Again, Rogue had full control of the map. There's a point in the game where he joked about Mad Lions not being past the halfway point because they were so isolated behind their yeah. tier two turrets. But it was through that immaculate team fighting and immaculate individual play that they were able to overcome the team that was near unanimously predicted as the favorite today. Phenomenal. Kia player of the series nominees. Go vote on Twitter at LEC. Alyoya, Kazi, and Kaiser. My vote goes to Kaiser straight up. Uh, this, this is not traditional team fights. These were not front to backs. These were just neat ball, five on fives at the exact same time. And I cannot wait to actually watch some of those engages in slow-mo because it truly blows my mind how, especially in this game, each of them played out. Look, you, you can, these are the three MVP votes for the series, and you yes. can vote for any of them. It's a good vote. In this game, it was Armut and Humanoid, and you cannot take it away from them. Armut, I mean, in the Dragon Pit and every consecutive fight, just disturbingly good play from those two individuals and the rest of the team to back them up. And look at the Rogue staff on your screen right now, heartbroken. After game one, I think many of us falsely assumed a uh, quick 3-0. After game one, just Rogue have the better option, but it did not play out that way. Mad Lions, they dug deep, they adapted their play style. And what a fantastic series. Thank you so much for guiding me through it. And we'll soon hear from Al Yoya before the Mad Lions bot lane. Join us in the LEC postgame lobby. That's Karzer. Those, those team fights were just something else.
to be discovered. Some of them are big, and some of them are small. But that's the thing with ideas. They don't just come to you. To find them, you have to move. Kia, movement that inspires. to the LEC Mad Lions take down Rogue. And with that, they advance to the next round and they will face off against G2 next week. And Alioria, thank you so much for joining me. Congrats on taking down Rogue. Thank you, thank you so much. Let's talk about the last game at first. Uh, you were behind, you had an insane scaling, but how did you make it? So I think it was quite funny because from scrims and from official games, we are not the best team at behind. Like you can see that in official games when we fall behind, we just lose it in 20 minutes most of the times. So in the game, we kept like pot, uh, positive attitude. So we were like, this is fine. We can still win. Like if we get th those shutdowns, we can really win. But I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was really hard. Like, and it was even hard to say that because like the game looked really bad, but we managed to come back. Yeah, but it's super hard to stay like calm and collected in this moment, especially since you're, it's your first best of five series. I mean, for you, but also on stage as Mad Lions. And we talked about this with Mac before the series, the fact that you're so, you're a key element in Mad Lions victory, especially in the early game. So I want to know as a rookie, as uh, someone who just played his first game on stage, did you feel any pressure throughout the series and how did you manage it? Yeah, I felt like uh, game one, I was scared of doing plays because I always have the fear of like uh, fucking up or like 
uh, having problems. But uh, <laughs> oops. But uh, after game two, I realized that I don't want to play like this because it's boring to just do nothing and lose. So at least if I lose, I, I, I want to have fun. So I'm going to int if I need to. But I want to go for plays. So I had to like say no more of this and just go for the play. If it goes wrong, it will go wrong. I will get flame, but that's fine. Like. It's fine, and that's how you learn. And I mean, we, we don't have many stage experiences this day. And we were talking before the, the interview, you told me that basically this is the first game you play on stage professionally. So I want to know, how did it go? And do you want to go back online now? So yeah, after <laughs> after you try this once, I don't think you ever want to go back to online. Like the amount of feelings you get, like playing on stage and everything, it just kind of proves you that this is what you want to do. And like, this is what you've been playing for. So. The stage games are just so much more fun and like everything. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I mean, as you said, you want to go for everything. You want to go for the clutch plays. And here it feels like you took Rogue out of their comfort zone, game after game after game. So Mac couldn't say anything before the series, but now that you beat them, tell me about working around Rogue's weaknesses and how you took advantage of them. So about Rogue weaknesses, I th we think that uh, they are actually like a really solid team. Uh, we think that they don't make much mistakes, but I don't think that they are really proactive. I think they play the game by small advantages. So that's something we can look up at. And sometimes they greet for a weak side. Uh, we feel like we could attack that. And that's kind of what we were looking for in the games. And it worked. It worked indeed. We, we saw the adaptation throughout the series and uh, we knew that jungle was going to be a very pivotal matchup between you and Inspired. And about this jungle meta, when you think about playoffs, it feels like we saw some changes uh, in the sense that Volley is a super successful pick. Udyr is very... Um, I mean, players want to play it, but it's not so successful. Hecarim seems to be the key pick of the meta, meta right now. Is it something you notice from scrims maybe? And how do you expect the jungle meta to evolve? for playoffs? Mm, I think it depends on every team. I think every team has its own, like, I would say jungle meta, but like it's different. But I think that um, this like this series, I didn't uh, play my best individually in jungle, but like, I feel like if you can have engaged tools and you can go for the right opportunities in jungle, I think that's mo one of the most important in jungle. I don't feel like, even I feel like carries are still like viable. I don't think that they are as good as they were before. I'm sorry, I just uh, got distracted by the fact that you said that you didn't play so well, maybe. I think you played out of your mind earlier, yeah, <laughs> this series. Yeah. And I, I'm not the only one who agrees. A lot of people said it backstage online. You are in discussions right now to be rookie of the season. How does that make you feel? And tell me about your evolution since the moment you joined the LEC to the insane performance you had today. Uh, yeah, the rookie of the split, yeah, for me, I would like to get it because I got it uh, last year when it was like my first year and I also got the MVP of the split. So I want to keep like getting these uh, prizes you can get as player in that moment. So for me, it would mean that I'm doing the things right. And it's like, uh, it's self-motivation, like it's seeing the support of the fans and everything. It's like really good. And about my evolution, I think on the first game, I still was really shaky and I was scared of doing plays. But after it, I was uh, getting more comfortable to my team. And like, I think I had my, m more trust on myself because like I had a lot of support from the people and like my team was trusting me even more. So I can f I could feel that a lot. And yeah, I, I just had confidence to go for more risky plays or like for, for my play style, I would say. You were talking about support uh, from the fans, from everyone online in your tweets uh, this morning. I hope that you got everything you wanted. And talking about the journey as a pro player, you were talking about getting all these trophies, these milestones. I feel like taking down the top two team in the LEC is a milestone. The next one is going to be G2. You saw them play yesterday. How do you expect the match to go next weekend? Um, what did you think about G2 yesterday? I think G2 uh, showed really strong on the first two games. I think that after that, I mean, they should have probably still take three, uh, game third if it wasn't by that smite, I would say. So I think that they are still like a really solid team and I'm really excited to play them on a stage because I think that on a stage is like when they, they even grow up more and like they are not better. I mean, yeah, I would say that they are like better uh, as a stage team. So I'm really excited to play against them. Exciting to see this matchup as well. Alioya, thank you so much for joining me today for the interview and congrats again on taking down Rogue. Thank you so much. And we're going to take one last break and we'll come back in a few minutes for post-game lobby with Dracos. Stay tuned.